Have you ever wondered what's behind a cloud? World imagery way back. Huh. Hello and welcome to underscore GIS. Let's get into tip number one, world imagery way back. If you search world imagery way back and click on the ArcGIS Living Atlas, it'll take you down to Las Vegas, but if you navigate to the area you're interested in and then click on only versions with local changes, you'll get a list of imagery dates th that you can look at. If you decide you want this year of imagery, you can click learn more about this release, select the URL, copy it, head over to your project, go to map, add data, add data using a local path or URL, paste the URL, and click add. Now you have the imagery from that year across the world. This can be helpful for looking at changes over time, such as with pre-development areas, or perhaps you're just using more imagery to identify wetlands on the landscape. On to tip two. Tip two, blend modes. Sometimes imagery can be a little bit boring. That's why I use blend modes to help make it pop. Blend modes allow you to use polygons and rasters to influence the look of the layers below it. If I turn off all these layers, we can go through them one by one. First, if I head to my Brighten layer, it's simply a polygon that covers this area. The polygon is white. I use the layer blend overlay, a transparency of 80%, and it just simply brightens it up. If I head over to Saturate, it's just another polygon that covers the area. You can select color and use the saturation layer blend. If I use a saturation of 70% and turn it on, it'll increase the saturation. If you want to decrease the saturation, you can instead choose something like white or black, and that'll reduce the saturation. If I turn on this digital elevation model, you'll notice I have a color scheme with white in the higher areas and grays and blacks in the lower areas. If I turn that layer off, switch layer blend to overlay, and set the transparency to 60%, when I turn it on, it'll brighten the high areas and darken the low areas. I'm going to reduce this effect a little bit by changing the transparency. Using the raster function slope, I took my terrain DEM and turned it into this. This color scheme applies a dark color to high slope areas while applying a light color to flatter areas. If I apply a layer blend of soft light, I'll get something like this, which I'll soften by increasing the transparency. Now you can start to see the stream banks showing up a little bit. What you can also do is use the raster tool statistics to kind of blur the slope raster. Here's how it looks unblurred with a blur to 5 meters and a blur at 20 meters. Using soft light and a transparency of 70 on all three layers, you get a less defined area, which may be more visually appealing. Lastly, I use the raster tool of Hillshade. This effect darkens one side of a slope while lightening the other side of the slope. Using a mixture of overlay and soft light, the Hillshade looks like this. By blending all these layers together, we go from this to this, helping the observer understand the landscape. And now it's time for some quick tips. Let's set a reference scale. All right, so I quickly threw together this map and I used blend modes to accentuate the landscape as well as to darken the area around the park. And I also used world imagery way back to select the best imagery. This one's from 2019. If I head back to my map, symbology scales so that the lines end up being quite clumpy. Or if I zoom in to adjust a label, it'll be hard to see how far they are from the label because the symbology shrinks. I can fix that by checking my layout scale which is 9,000. If I head back to the map, enter in 9,000, and right click on my map in the contents pane, I can set the reference scale. Now when I zoom in and out, the symbology scale won't change. And when I zoom out, it won't all clump together. This will make it easier to align labels. And that brings me to tip two, haloing letters. Sometimes when you have letters on top of a bit of a busy background or imagery, you'll have lines that run through it that makes it a little bit more difficult to read. If I go in, select my label, and change the symbol, I can head down to Halo and change the color using the eyedropper. If I select a color fairly representative of the area, it'll provide a halo that'll make it easier to read. And because the color is fairly similar, it won't stick out very much. I hope you enjoyed these tips today. If you want me to make more videos like this, let me know. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching underscore GIS.